the topic for today's discussion is on the package of practice for Barsim. Barsim or Egyptian clover, that is Trifolium alexandrinum, is popularly known as the king of four other crops for irrigated condition of northern India because it is available for six to seven months starting from November to May, giving four to six cuttings during winter, spring and early summer seasons and providing nutrition, succulent and palatable forage to milch cattle. It is an annual leguminous for the crop and is one of the most suitable for the crop for areas below 1700 meter altitude with irrigation facilities. It remains soft and succulent at all the stages of growth. It can be grown without irrigation in areas with high water table and under water log conditions. The green forage can also be converted into excellent hay and utilized for enrichment of poor quality roughages like straw. Besides, Bursim being a legume crop has got a soil building characteristics and improves the physical chemical and biological properties of the soil, resulting in better growth and yield of crops in rotation. Thus, the crop is very important from the point of view of conservation farming and importance and imparts sustainability to the soil productivity and crop production system as a whole. Let us discuss about the origin and history of uh, Bursim. Bursim is said to be originated from Egypt, for which it is also called as Egyptian clover. However, some said that it was introduced from Syria to Egypt in the 6th century. From Egypt, it was introduced to India in the 19th century and to Pakistan, South Africa, USA and Australia in the 20th century. Barsim was introduced to India in 1904 and today it is grown on more than 2 million hectares in India alone. Now let's discuss about the geographic distribution of Barsim. Barsim is a further crop of Egypt, Syria, Persia, Pakistan and India. In its traditional area, it is cultivated from about 35 degree not to the tropic as a winter crop. In the northwestern Himalayas, Barsim can be grown as a winter crop up to about 1500 meter altitude, although it may suffer a little frost burn. Barsim has been one of the fastest spreading for the species in recent times, mainly under small scale farming conditions. Cultivated areas reach about 1.3 million hectare in 2007 in Egypt and 1.9 million hectare in India according to ICR 2012 reports. Morocco adopted Barsim in the beginning of the 20th century and 50,000 hectare were grown under irrigation in 2005. In India, the further crop is cultivated in Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. Let's see about the economic importance of Barsim. Barsim is highly nutritious, succulent and palatable forage for all types of livestock. It stimulates milk production of cows and buffaloes and is popular both for milks and drought animals. Bursim is a good source of crude protein, calcium, phosphorus and ether extract. The green forage of Bursim on dry matter basis contains 17 to 22% crude protein, 42 to 49% neutral detergent fiber, 35 to 38% acid detergent fiber, 24 to 25% cellulose and 7 to 10% hemicellulose. 
Let us come to land preparation methods. The land should be perfectly leveled to obtain even distribution of irrigation water and to avoid water stagnation. Barsim can be grown in saline or sodic soils if salt concentration is not allowed to accumulate above certain critical level through field flooding and leaching to provide optimum conditions for seed germination and crop establishment. Once established, the crop can tolerate fair amount of salt concentration. Moreover, rice barsim rotation is recommended to reclaim such soil as these crops require frequent and heavy irrigations which cause considerable leaching of soils from the root zone. Let us see about the seed inoculation of uh, barsim. Being a leguminous crop, barsim enriches the soil with sizable quantities of nitrogen through symbiotic nitrogen fixation with the help of rhizobium bacteria. Therefore, barsim seed should be inoculated with culture of rhizobium trifoli to enhance the process of root nodules, especially in soils where barsim is being grown for the first time. Now let us see about the seed requirement per unit area. Under normal condition, the optimum seed rate of barsim has been found to be 25 kg per hectare. When sowing is taken up earlier than the appropriate time, the quantity of seed used is increased by 15 to 20 percent to compensate the loss of seedling mortality occurring due to prevailing high atmospheric temperature. Let us see about the sowing time. Sowing time is an important factor governing germination, seedling survival, number of cuts, and herbage production. Barsim should be shown when the temperature is in the range of 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. Thus, the optimum sowing time of barsim in Punjab, Haryana, and Uttar Pradesh, that is the bowl cultivation of this crop, is the entire month of October. In Bengal and Gujarat, sowing is taken up only in the month of November. Sowing can continue up to the first week of December in eastern regions and delayed sowing results in loss of one or two cuttings. Timely sowing extends the period of forage availability and therefore it increases the total yield. Let us see about the sowing method for Bersim. The seed bed for Bersim sowing is prepared by filling water to a depth of 4 to 5 cm, raking the soil and creating the muddy condition by light puddling that is mechanical manipulation of soil at high moisture content are required. Then the overnight shock seeds are broadcast in standing muddy water in crosswise directions to obtain uniform seed distribution. Sowing of barsim seed should be done towards the evening or during non-windy periods of the day. Now let's see the seed bed preparation methods. The land should be opened with soil inversion plow followed by two or three operations by the seed plow or cultivator. The preparation of good seed bed is an essential component of cultivation practices to obtain desired level of tilth. Fine seed bed is required, especially when barsim is to be grown as seed crop in rows without puddling to facilitate weed remover and rowing for quality seed production. When the crop is to be shown in puddle beds, thorough cultivation is not required. Only cross harrow plowing are needed to remove established weeds, stubbles of the previous crop, and to open the soil for leveling by blanking. In irrigated farming, fertilizer use is the most important factor influencing growth and productivity of the crops. Since barsim is a leguminous crop, it needs less nitrogen from fertilizer sources because its root nodules contain rhizobium trifoli 
bacteria which fix atmospheric nitrogen for plant use. Experimental evidences have proved that 20 kg nitrogen per hectare at sowing is the optimum dose. In general, the crop responds significantly up to 80 to 90 kg P2O5 per hectare and 30 to 40 kg K2O per hectare. Now let's share about the water requirement for this barsim crop. Barsim requires huge quantities of water for producing high succulent biomass. For every kilogram of plant dry matter produced, as much as 500 kilograms of water or more may be necessary in a dry climate. Therefore, adequate and timely water supply is one of the basic inputs for obtaining good yield. On the basis of soil type and normal climatic condition, the following irrigation schedules may be recommended for different seasons and soils. From October to February, under clay and clay loam soils, the irrigation interval may be 14 to 16 days and under loam soil, it may be 12 to 14 days. From March to April, under clay and clay loam soils, the interval of irrigation may vary from 10 to 12 days and under loam soils, it may vary from 8 to 10 days. Now let's discuss about the weed management practices for Barsim. Weed management is one of the vital components of Barsim production. The major associated with a Barsim crop is Chicory, that is Chicorium intibus. The nature of this weed is such that it infests from the field to seed and vice versa. The intensity of field infestation could be minimized by treatment with 10% solution of common salt and deep summer plowing with soil inversion plow after final harvest of the crop. Let's see about the disease management for this barsim crop. During the month of December and January, when the crop attains luxuriant vegetative growth and cloudy days persist for a longer period, the heavy infestation of fungal diseases such as root rot caused by Rhizoctonia solenae and stem rot caused by Sclerotina trifoliarum occur. The agronomic approaches to solve these problems include number one, avoiding the growing of bursim crop in the same field year after year and deep plowing during summer. Number two, using well rotted manure in proper quantities. Number three, fertilizing the crop with heavy dose of potassium. Number four, leveling field properly to avoid water stagnation. Number five, avoiding too frequent irrigation during cloudy days. And the last one is cutting the crop frequently to expose the ground for adequate light availability. Coming to climate, Bursim is adopted to cool and moderately cool climate. Such conditions prevail during winter and spring seasons in North India, which is considered as a favorable and productive zone for this crop. The optimum temperature at the time of sowing Bursim is 25 degrees Celsius. For luxuriant vegetative growth, temperature range of 25 to 27 degrees Celsius has been found to be ideal. Uniformly high temperature in South Indian conditions limit the cultivation of Bursim. Now let's see about the soil situation required for Bursim cultivation. Well-drained clay to clay loam soils rich in humus, calcium and phosphorus are suitable for a good crop of persim. However, it can be grown on sandy loam soils but requires frequent irrigations. Comparatively, heavy textured soils are considered better due to greater water retaining capacity and congenial edaphic environments for the crop persistency. Now let's come to the varieties developed so far under this Barsim crop. The first variety is 
Mescavi, which is a fast growing variety and attains plant height of about 75 cm at flower initiation stage. On an average, it gives 500 to 600 quintals grain fodder and 100 to 125 quintals of dry matter yields per hectare in about five cuttings. The second variety is BL1, which is a long duration variety as compared to the commonly grown variety Mescavi. Because of this, one additional cutting may be obtained from this variety by the end of June. It gives, on an average, green fodder and dry matter yields of 600 and 130 quintal per hectare, respectively. The third variety is BL22. This is a long duration variety which gives additional cut during June. It gives, on an average, green fodder and dry matter yields of 750 and 135 quintal per hectare, respectively. Verda, JB1, 2 and 3, UPB103, Pusa Zain, Khadarvi, Chinwara are other varieties of the crop. Now let's come to cropping system. Barsium finds its place in different cropping system in the following ways. In overlapping cropping system with perennial grasses, in parallel cropping system with rubby grain crops, the first two cases imply with intensive forage production systems in mill set areas to meet the forage requirements around the year. These systems are adopted on specialized dairy farms to harvest green nutritious forage with twin objectives of stabilizing mill production over the periods, reducing the concentrate mixture on animal ration, economizing on use of fertilizer nitrogen in cropping systems. The third system may be adopted by small farmers who intend to produce food and forage concurrently from the limited land area. In these systems, two approaches could be applied. The first one is associating cropping in space and time. The second one is grain and forage cropping in proportionate area. However, Barsim intensive forage cropping system offers the following advantages. The first one is growing up Barsim ensures effective utilization of land during dormant phase of perennial grass component. The second one is combining of cropping of Barsim and grasses helping in balance utilization of plant nutrients from different soil depths. The third advantage is Barsim improves physical, chemical and biological properties of the soil and thus improves its fertility status. The fourth advantage is Barsim provides nitrogen nutrition to component grasses on one hand and cowpea is grown on residual phosphate fertility of Barsim on the other. Thus, there is considerable saving of fertilizer nutrients. The fifth advantage is that the system provides opportunities for rational use of water as extra irrigation are not required for the establishment of grass in standing Barsim crop. And the sixth advantage is intercropping perennial grasses with forage legumes has been reported to reduce anti-quality constituents like oxalates in hybrid napier. Besides providing balance and nutritious herbage to animals. And the next advantage is that there is almost continuous flow of grain forage throughout the year from the same piece of land which is important for farmers with small size of land holdings. Now let's come to cutting management and the forage yield. Forage yield potential of Barsim crop is very high. The crop is capable of producing 1000 to 1200 quintals of green forage per hectare under improved agronomic management practices and favorable weather conditions. 
mixing Japan rep or Chinese cabbage at the rate of 2.25 kg seed per hectare increases the yield by 20 to 25% in first cut. The yield may further be increased by introducing early cutting. The final cutting should not be taken later than the end of February if crop is to be left for seed purposes. As India is a land of cattle, growing proper fodder crop is a must to give space for rubby crops, which otherwise would remain fallow as seen in many states of the country. Fodder crops are important for milk cattle, for quality and quantity milk, which is one of the backbone of Indian economy. Using scientific technology and improved package of practice would enhance production of quality fodder year round, connecting Kharif and Rabi seasons in India. With the increase in demand for milk, proper feeds to the cattle are mandatory to keep the continuous availability of milk and milk byproducts. Hence, sufficient land has to be reserved for Rabi fodders to keep the Indian economy shining.